Hello, my name is Alice Hoffman and I'm the Program Manager for Enterprise in Space. I've built billions of dollars worth of complex projects, but none so exciting and world-changing as this one. Imagine a future where every student, everywhere, has a personal tutor in the palm of her hand, allowing her to reach for the stars. My award-winning team of educators and AI scientists will build the first autonomous learning system based on artificial intelligence. Our AI is a synthetic personality called Allie, and she will inspire tens of thousands of students to learn science autonomously and at their own pace. Allie will mentor each student, providing individual teaching, learning their strengths, assessing their mastery, and answering their questions. Our goal is to put the highest quality education into the hands of all students, accelerating their learning and enriching their world. Allie mentors each student individually using natural language and visual examples. She has potentially unlimited knowledge and never tires of explaining. Allie enables each student to go beyond any curriculum because she is attuned to each individual's thinking. She is expert at huge amounts of human knowledge but she never forgets each learner, what they know and where they are going. Allie engages in a Socratic dialogue to continuously assess each learner's mastery and adjust her teaching accordingly. Allie is being engineered on Value Springs Enterprise Mind, Artificial Intelligence Software, and IBM's Watson. She is being taught by some of the world's best teachers. Let's watch how Allie interacts with students. Hi, my name is Allie. I'm an artificial intelligence, and I'm here to assist you. My goal is to support each student as she or he learns autonomously. I pinpoint student learning problems and advise steps for support. I remember each student and guide her or him to explore what it will take to fly an experiment aboard the NSS Enterprise in microgravity. I help students learn about the web of human knowledge connecting science and technology to the history of ideas, art, and literature. What's your name? Finn. How old are you? Six. Hi, Allie. I'm Tia. How old are you, Tia? I am 17 years old. What would happen if you dropped a feather and a hammer on Earth? Which would fall first? The hammer. Excellent. Well, in my left hand, I have a, a feather. In my right hand, a hammer. And I guess one of the reasons uh, we got here today was because of a gentleman named Galileo a long time ago who made a rather significant discovery about falling objects in gravity fields. And we thought that uh, where would be a better place to confirm his uh, findings than on the moon. And uh, so we thought we'd try it here for you. Uh, the feather happens to be appropriately a falcon feather for our falcon. And I'll uh, drop the two of them here and hopefully they'll hit the ground at the same time. How about that? Which proves that Mr. Galileo was correct in his findings. And what would happen if you dropped a feather and a hammer on the moon? It all at the same time, though. Excellent. What does the moon not have? Air. Bravo! I am going to fly aboard a satellite that orbits the Earth named NSS Enterprise, and I'm going to ask students like you and your friends to design experiments to fly also. What kind of experiment would you like to fly? I would like to be, do an experiment with tiny squids. They'll float up the tube into the spaceship. Hi there. What's your name and how old are you? Hi, I'm Orion and I'm 14. How can I help you? I'm working on a hypothesis for the experiment I want to send to the NSS Enterprise Orbiter. I was wondering if this was a good hypothesis. Mosquitoes will not be able to fly well in microgravity. Well, this is a good idea for a general hypothesis, but it doesn't help you figure out how to design the experiment. The hypothesis must be refined. Your hypothesis should be something that you can actually test. 
So you need to be able to both explain what you will do and measure what will happen. Try telling me what you are going to test. How about mosquitoes will not be able to control how they fly in microgravity? Now you are heading in the right direction. But the hypothesis is not really testable. You need to design an experiment around the research. All right. Mosquitoes will not be able to navigate through a maze to get to a food source in microgravity. Excellent. That is a good hypothesis. Hi, Allie. I was wondering about any studies that have been done regarding the relationship between gravity and observations of Earth's climate. Have there been any studies or experiments done on this topic? There are hundreds of references on the internet regarding the relationship between gravity and Earth's climate data. Can you tell me a little more? What other aspects of these relationships interest you? Of course, I'm interested in the correlation between gravitational concentrations on Earth and Earth's changing water cycle due to various energy balance processes such as solar energy. So what might be the best way to demonstrate these relationships? I have reviewed all the text and diagrams related to these subjects everywhere on the internet and find that this type of research is conducted by a pair of identical Earth-orbiting spacecraft. The most interesting results can be found at these links. Neil, have you considered creating a numerical model of land surface water concentrations derived from satellite data and integrated with changing energy processes? No, I never considered that, but that's a great idea. Thank you, Allie, and I'll be sure to check out those links. Hi, Allie. I love you, Allie. The real-life orbiter that we will launch and return to Earth, called the NSS Enterprise, will be full of the experiments that the students develop during their learning experience. They will interact with Allie to learn the scientific method, how to imagine experiments in microgravity, and how to form cross-cultural teams to develop those experiments and present them to our contest judges. These are valuable skills that help students throughout their lives. Allie will coach the student teams who win the contest to fly their experiments through the orbiter integration process and communicate with them about the status of their experiments in orbit, just like the computers in the Star Trek series did with their crew members. Remember how Star Trek inspired countless fans to become scientists, technologists, engineers, artists, and mathematicians? I'm one of them, and I'm asking you to join our team to inspire and teach today's students and to bring about the new and better world of tomorrow, similar to the one that was envisioned by Gene Roddenberry in Star Trek, where all the people of the Earth have access to all the knowledge of the universe. Your gift will help to make that vision a reality. On behalf of empowered students everywhere, I thank you.